Yo ho ho! So we've made it to almost the end of this chapter with Recurrence Relations. After this it is just the review. But we're moving on to something which I'm calling Finding A and B. And what I mean by this is, if you think back to recurrence relations, you know they are of the form un plus 1 equals aun plus b. And you can already work out certain terms of a recurrence relation. If you were given u1, you could work out u2, u3, u4, and so on. And that's what you'd have to do a lot of the time. However, sometimes you will already know U1, U2 and U3. You'll know these first few terms. For example, if you were a doctor in a hospital, you could easily measure how much of a drug was in someone's bloodstream every 12 hours or so. So you would know U1, U2 and U3. And your job is to come up with a recurrence relation based on the information that you gather. And you would have to do this in order to work out, for example, a limit. So, sometimes you'll be given U1, U2 and U3 and instead of working out certain terms you have to work out the values of A and B. And to do this, what we want to do is we want to look back to something that everybody loves. I know Ava is the master of these and it is simultaneous equations. Oh yeah! So, example number one. A recurrence relation is defined by un plus 1 equals aun plus b. You already know that. Taking the real life example away for now, I'm just going to make this straightforward, just giving you the numbers. Let's say u1 equals 5, u2 equals 9.5, and u3 equals 20.75. Find the values in this recurrence relation of a and b. So to do this, I'll just go over the page. What you want to think about is these terms that you have. So, let's get rid of that as well. You already know that u1 equals 5, so you can write that down. If you wanted to do this the exact same way that you normally do, you would then work out u2. And you know that the way you would work out u2, well that's the next term, so you would do a, whatever a is times the previous term, plus b. So you would do a times, the previous term was u1, so you would do a times u1 plus b. Again, a and b, we don't know what they are, so we're just going to have to write them down as a and b. But we do know what u1 is. We know u1 is 5, so instead of writing a times 5, you could just write down, well, a times 5 is 5a, so you can write it as 5a. Plus b would have to stay as plus b, but if you think about it, that's us working out u2. We already know what u2 is. u2 is 9.5. So we can say that equals 9.5. Moving on, if you were working out u3, you would do that the exact same way. So to work out u3, well, that's the next val next term. So you do a times the previous term. So be a times u2 and then plus b. However, thinking about it again, uh, u2 we know is 9.5. So we can say that's a times 9.5, or 9.5a plus b. And again, look at it, we already know u3 is 20.75. So we can replace all of that with 20.75, or we can see. And looking at this, you can see how excited Ava is. We have a simultaneous equation, yeah! So from here, we can easily find out the values of a and b. And to do this, well, you could always multiply the equations through by a negative. So you would have a negative b and a positive b and then add. But something that's quite simple here is to just subtract. So what you can always do is if you do the bottom equation minus the top equation, 9.5a take away 5a, we'll believe us with 4.5a, b take away b is 0b, so we don't need to write it, and 20.75 take away 9.5 will be 11.25. So 4.5a equals 11.25, therefore a would be 2.5. What do you do after that with simultaneous equations? Well, if you know a, we need to work out b. And the way you do that is by subbing this value of a into one of the equations here in purple. Sub it into any one you want, it makes no difference. I'd probably ignore the one with negatives and take smaller numbers. 
In this case, obviously, there's no negatives, but so it doesn't really matter which one you're doing, but I'm subbing it into the, that one there. So 5a add b is 9.5. Replace a with 2.5 you'd have 12.5 plus b is 9.5, subtract 12.5 from both sides, and b would be equal to negative 3. Therefore, find the values of a and b. Well, then we know a is 2.5 and b is negative 3, and that would be your answer. A lot of the time, though, you will be asked what is the recurrence relation. So if you were asked for it, you would then say, therefore, your recurrence relation would be un plus 1 equals 2.5 un minus 3. That's just substituting in the values of a and b into your general term up here. As I said, this is mainly used in real life examples, so let's try a real life example. So with this here, a patient is given an initial dose of 80 milligrams of a drug. After the first top-up, there is 52 milligrams, and after the second top-up, there is 40.8 milligrams. So use this information to recreate a recurrence relation, which is obviously of the form un plus 1 equals a un plus b. And for part b, the treatment is effective if the strength of the drug in the body remains between 30 and 40 milligrams. Is this treatment effective? So the first thing we want to do, ignoring part B, we want to uh, use the information to create a recurrence relation. So let's do the solution for part A. You want to start off the same way. So you know the initial dose right at the start, before anything happened, right at the start, uh, there was 80 milligrams of the drug that went in to the patient. So you know that U0 was equal to 80. After that, well, after U0, you would then work out U1. And to work out U1, do the same thing. So it's going to be A times the previous term plus B. So it'll be A times U0 plus B. But we know some of the numbers from this amazing wee story. We know that after the first top up, there was 52 milligrams. And we also know that we started with 80. So u0 is 80, so we've got a times 80, or 80a plus b equals. And as I just said, the first top up left us with 52 milligrams, so u1 would be 52. After that, u2 would equal a times the previous term, so a times u1 plus b. Again, we know what u1 is. u1 is 52, so it's going to be 52 times a, or 52a, plus b, and that equals, well again, reading more of this story, we know that after the second top up, there was 40.8, so U2 would be 40.8. Same thing again, highlighted in purple, I've got these two equations, I've got two unknowns, A and B, so I can use simultaneous equations. Remember, simultaneous equations is really easy for these questions, all you want to do is just subtract in order to cancel out B, in order to eliminate B. So. Subtracting, again, ignore negatives. So the last one I did bottom minus top. Here I would do top minus bottom. So 80 take away 52 leaves me with 28a. B take away B cancels out. And 52 take away 40.8 would be 11.2. After that, divide by 28 would give me 0 0.4. So I know the value of A. Once you know the value of A, you can sub it into one of the equations. Doesn't matter which one. So A is 0 0.4, you're putting it into an equation. So replace A with 0 0.4. Simplify that a little bit, and you can work out the value of B. Once you've done that, go back to the question. It does say use the information to create a recurrence relation. So you have to finish off with something in that form. You cannot just say that A is 0 0.4 and B is 20, and that's it. You have to write it as a recurrence relation. So your recurrence relation would be un plus 1 equals a un, a is 0 0.4, so 0 0.4 un plus b, b is 20, so it's plus 20. So that is how you would do part a. Moving on then with part b, using this recurrence relation, a lot of the time for part a, you'll be asked to create something which you will need for part b. So second part. Mm -hmm. 
For part B, the treatment is effective if the strength of the drug in the body remains between 30 and 40 milligrams. Is the treatment effective? So we know this is our recurrence relation, and what we want to think about is, well, in the long term, in the long run, will there be between 30 and 40 milligrams in the blood, uh, in the body of this patient? So what we're thinking about here is really the limit. Okay, the limit tells you what you will be at. So first of all, does a limit exist? Leah, does it? Well done. Why? Brilliant. A limit exists because your 0 0.4, the value in front of you n, is between negative 1 and 1. Well done, Leah. From that, you can work out the limit using the uh, equation. So limit equals b over 1 minus a. Sub in those values. So your limit would be b is 20. So it's 20 over 1 minus 0 0.4, which becomes 20 over 0 0.6, which will give us 33.33. Again, just round to one or two decimal places. From that, we know the amount of the drug that will be in the patient's body. So will that be effective? Well, the treatment will be effective since 33.33 is between 30 and 40, which is what it's looking for. So that is, will be the amount in the long run. Try some of these questions. See how you get on. It's just using simultaneous equations, setting up the terms uh, U1, U2, U3, and then seeing what you get. As I said, a lot of the time it links into real life questions. Think about how you're finding this. Let me know if you need help with it. Good luck.